Welcome to our 192 square foot tiny house on wheels. Today we're going to show you how we use our cubic mini wood stove to heat our house in the winter. We'll show you how long it takes us to get the stove up to temperature, how much it changes the temperature and the humidity in the house, and how we supplement with electric heat so that we actually get to sleep through the night. Are you waiting patiently for a fire? <laughs> Or do you want to steal the sticks? Hmm. <laughs> How I light it. Uh, you want this part all the way in. This is the second burn. And you want this all the way open. It's just the air intake. So then I uh, cardboard egg carton. And uh, put some lint in on top. And then I sprinkle uh, the wood shavings from when I cut up all the wood. As uh, just a little bit of extra tinder. We have like a bag of it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Sawdust. Yeah. Sawdust, yeah. And then we have all the different layers of wood, softer wood, and then smaller wood, fat wood. Yeah. Redford. I cheat a little bit too, just to get the temperature hotter. Uh, I use, I have them, so uh, I use the compressed eco logs. Uh, they work really well, but I like to put them on the side because if they fall down for some reason, it's not near the door and these can flake off. You'll have little, little embers flying yeah. all over the place when that thing falls apart. Yeah, so we kind of tuck it in the side. So you don't, you don't really, you don't need that, but it's just, I have it, and I'm just going to go through them, so and just then use it. sometimes we'll throw in, when the orange peels are really dry, like when they get to the point that they're crunchy, we'll put in a couple pieces of the dry orange peels because <laughs> the oil in the orange peel helps to get the fire started. Put some fat wood in there. I did have all this in there. You don't need all this, but... And then we switched from using the long handle lighter that we usually use for the stove to the long matches and I think that makes a difference because the like the wooden part of the match yeah. actually get, really helps get this fire started. There's like a constant flame there to break some of it. Oh, uh oh. Oh, there's a wood thief. Yeah. Redford. Oh, he's gonna make a mess. Gotten good at this. It's, yeah. Uh, but now you're recording me, so more of a oh yeah. I don't know Pressure. Go that well now. Let that go for a little bit. Hopefully it catches. Definitely have to kind of work the layers of mm -hmm. starting with the smaller pieces and like a good fire starter. And then uh, sometimes I'll cheat. I use this. Sometimes it helps if I that would. I'll close the door a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. Look how clean that door is. <laughs> it won't last long. Up oh, there it goes. See, yeah. this little bucket on the side is where we keep some of our fire starting material. So we have a bag of dryer lint that my friends collect for us. We keep our cardboard egg containers, and then a little bit of. Uh, that fire starter, whatever you call that. We don't really use that one that much. It's kind of waxy. We don't like to have anything waxy in the wood stove when it has that double combustion. They say that's not good. So the fire starters that we use for campfires, like the egg cartons with the lint that I put wax on, we don't use in, in the wood stove because you're not supposed to have candle wax or anything like that in here because it messes with the, uh, the second burn. It's going pretty good now. Yeah. So over here is Redford's stick collection. And then the secret area full of sticks is down here. So this whole basket, I processed all these sticks and uh, that's what we use most of the time to really get the fire started. So it's a good system having this all in the house and then the bins outside have even more so that we can go for, gosh, like a couple of weeks mm -hmm. without having to do anything. That one big branch that fell, I'm still using Chopped that. Chopped it up, for yeah. A while. yeah. That was uh, heating our house for like a I week. I dragged it over. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's perfect. Yeah, it's <laughs> neat. You know, it's kind of like with the electric car, I get really excited when I can plug my car in for free because you never get free gas. Mm -hmm. The same thing for the wood stove, like you're never going to get free propane or something like that to heat your house, but if we find a big branch that's dry and we can cut it up, 
you're heating your house with that. So it's really pretty neat that way. It's a little smoky now. Once it catches, it'll burn it off and you'll get to see. see the... It's not even registering yet. No. Okay. So we're still in creosote land. Oh, yeah. That's one thing when I when I start this, I like to use the compressed logs to keep, get the heat up real quick. Mm -hmm. So you produce less creosote. Yeah, I'm timing us. We're at 4 minutes and 30 seconds right now. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how long it takes us to get it up to temperature now that mm -hmm. uh, we're pretty good at it. Oh, well, you're pretty good at it. You're, <laughs> you're usually the fire master. Mm -hmm. I think we've really noticed a difference like now the stove is freshly cleaned so um, it'll probably be easier for us to get this started and get it up to temperature pretty quick when it's like the day or two before we know we're gonna clean the stove you can notice it's a little harder like the the fire is just kind of finickier when you're getting it started so you really can start to like notice how the fire behaves differently different kinds of wood or you just know that you have to clean the stovepipe. The efficiency changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now we're at 11 minutes since it started. It's 67 degrees with 58% humidity and good air quality, according to the Dyson. So we'll see uh, how quickly we can get that temperature up. <laughs> so it's 16 minutes into starting the fire and we just got into the good zone and out of the creosote land. So it's not bad. I feel like it used to take us a lot longer to get there. Starting to get a little bit of soot on the uh, glass, but still can see the fire pretty well. That'll burn off. We're at 22 minutes since it went on and it's right in the ideal zone for that and right in the ideal zone for the stovepipe. So, doing well. Well here's red, not for you. <laughs> here's the the wood that we brought in for tonight. We're gonna see how long this lasts. Kind of give you an idea of how much wood and like how big the pieces are. They're just couple inches squared in each direction. This stuff is the really hard stuff. That's the oak, right? Yeah. Those pieces. I think. I think so it's mixed in with some other stuff, but a lot of that's the oak that we got in that cord that we ordered. So but once it gets going, I kind of just like to put a throw a hardwood. Yeah, but that's small chunk in. So it kind of slows it down. There you go. One of the things that we've learned is that having a wood stove can kind of create a little bit more of a mess than using electric or propane heat just because when you're moving wood in and out of the house all the time you end up with little pieces of wood all over the place so make sure you have a vacuum handy it took us what 15 16 minutes to get it going up the temperature but i really haven't fussed with it you know once it lit yeah once you get it to the point where you can close the door and it doesn't die out then you can kind of let it build up some heat for a while it's not super cold out but uh we've had super cold nights that we've tried this. It's been in the 20s. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we've had, I've opened up the window at night. Yeah, it was too hot. Yeah. That's, I mean, I guess that's the bad thing. Like, <laughs> it's a lot harder to regulate the indoor temperature, especially in a small space like this, versus having, you know, heat where you can just turn the thermostat up or down because heat rises and uh, we do have a high ceiling in our house and uh, our bed is up in the loft, so sometimes we'll go up and we don't realize it's like 85 degrees in the loft. I don't mind, I'll be honest. Patrick, not so much. No. He can't sleep if he's too hot. So we end up opening the two windows on either side of the bed and then it's fine, then it's nice. But uh, we have to really kind of work on the insulation because this stove will not burn for a really long time if you're not feeding it. So it's not a big deal in the tiny house because we're always walking past here. It's right in the middle of the house. So we're always like going to the kitchen or going to the bathroom. So somebody will just throw a log in every time you walk by and that keeps it going during the day. But at night, as soon as we go to bed, we'll fill it and it'll only burn for a couple hours after that. And then it dies out. And then it's just a matter of relying on the insulation in the house to like hold the heat in. So I think that's the difference. And I think too, with the the way this works, is just the, the, the way the heat is, it's just, goes through the whole house 
and everything inside the house. And so it's a warm. lot more radiant instead of just like space heaters where it just blows <laughs> to make the <laughs> inside that? warmer. But this is like the whole thing gets warm. So we've had some cold nights and this goes out, but it, with our insulation and the whole unit being warm itself, it's, it's just a little chilly in the morning. It's not bad. Yeah. Like just when you come down in the morning, last year when we didn't have it it was really cold like you would come down the floor Ugh. would be cold we've also changed other things like we've skirted we have the new flooring which mm. actually feels kind of good on your feet this uh, woven rug keeps the floor a lot warmer um, so we've changed a lot of things since we got the house five years ago but uh, I think insulating the house to just hold in the heat overnight has made a big difference so that I mean in the beginning, we were like, oh, one of us will get up in the middle of the mm -hmm. night and throw a log in. Yeah, how well has that worked? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. Neither of us are, uh, <laughs> once we go to sleep, yeah. we're out. Yeah. We're not I'll doing anything. Mm -mm. We're at two hours and 45 minutes since we started. And uh, it's actually a little bit cool right now. It's kind of... I don't know. And what did you say the temperature was? 78. And what's the humidity? 64. Yeah. We cooked too, that uh, didn't help. Oh yeah, we did. So now the stove's been going five hours. And that's how much wood we went through, so we just uh, put the last piece in for the night. And we're good on the heat. It's actually it's pretty warm in here. What's the, the bed, bedtime temperature? It's 41 outside. It's 80 degrees in here. It's 80 degrees? Yeah, it's probably hotter up there. <laughs> uh, hold on, it's switching through. But it's 60, 67% humidity outside. And it's 56 in here. Okay, so it went down. Yeah, and we still dried the towels from showering yeah. and stuff. So, all right, we're going to have to open the windows in the loft because it's too hot. Redford, are you too hot? I'm sitting weird. He looks disheveled. Do he doesn't know. And that window is even open back there, yeah. too. So We cheated. All right. <laughs> to bed. We'll see what this looks like in the morning. When we get up in the morning, everything that was in the wood stove is pretty much turned into ash. Once in a while we'll have maybe a couple embers that are left at that point if we wanted to restart the stove we could, but it does a good job of burning everything. According to the Dyson, it is 63 degrees in the tiny house this morning and we didn't have anything on last night except for the, the Dyson filter and it's 28 degrees outside. So uh, I'd say that's pretty good. So then our kind of normal routine, we usually sit on the couch with Red <laughs> if he wants to get up, which doesn't look very promising. <laughs> but uh, I'll turn on the electric heater over here. And we'll end up using that until we uh, go out and do our stuff for the day, and then when we come back, we'll do another fire. So, all right, at least it's sunny out today. Looks pretty nice, hopefully it'll warm up. Even though we still use our electric heaters for part of the day, just for convenience, we are so glad that we got the Cubic Mini wood stove installed in the tiny house. It's one of my favorite things, and it has actually made winter slightly enjoyable. Make sure you check out our videos of how we use the oven on top of the Cubic Mini to cook our food because if you're heating the house, you might as well cook some good food at the same time. Well, you worried about you and me, the injustice, the next president to be. The news and watch hear your career. It's time for you to face those fears. And it's all fair to be aware and I'll be there. So don't be scared. Just take a deep breath of air. And one, two, three to ten. You begin to focus again. And though time flies, we 
have enough to realize this bigger than the both of us.